To perform a large-scale multi-sample SNP analysis, the first step is to assemble your multiplex data in Seekman Engine. To do this, set up your project as usual, but after adding your read files, check the Multiplex Data option. This will allow your data to be assembled as multiple samples. For 454, or ion torrent data, your samples will be separated using standard MID or barcode tags, or custom tags that you define. For Illumina data, read files are typically already separated out by sample, so all you need to do after selecting the multiplex option is to name each sample. Once your multi-sample data has been assembled, you can begin your analysis in Seekman Pro. You'll see that in the alignment view for multiplex data, my reference sequence is shown here at the top, and then I can also see the consensus sequence for each of my four samples. For this example, I've assembled the exomes of four individuals, and you can see them listed here. Clicking on the triangle next to an exome name will show me the constituent sequences for that sample group. To begin SNP analysis, I'll open the SNP report, and you'll see here a column called MID, and this matches the tags or custom names that I set up in Seekman Engine before I assembled my data. And so this allows me to see which sample contains the SNP. Now if I sort by reference position and then scroll down my list a little bit here, I can see, for example, at this position, I have the same SNP occurring in all four individuals. Now if I double click on one of these rows, that will take me to that position in the alignment view, and then I can see that SNP within the context of each exome by expanding any of these samples. Now as a shortcut, if you hold down the Alt key while you click on one of these triangles, that will expand all of the samples. Now for large-scale multi-sample projects, the next step to go further with comparing SNPs across multiple individuals is to send our data to ArraySTAR. To do that, you can export the data from the SNP report by selecting File, Save SNP Report for Contigs. Once the SNP report has been exported, we can open it in ArraySTAR by selecting Start SNP Project, then clicking on Add Data File, and selecting the text file that we just exported. Here you can see that each of my four exomes has been imported and labeled with the same names that I used in Seekman Engine. So all I need to do is click Next to finish the import. After importing your SNP data, you'll be able to see it in the SNP table. And you can use these buttons here on the toolbar to choose the specific data columns you want to see displayed. What we're looking at here is the name of the reference sequence, the reference position of the SNP, the called sequence at that position for each of our four samples, the dbSNP ID, and the gene name. So what this gives us then is the breakdown of SNPs for each sample at each of the positions listed. So at this particular position on chromosome 1, for example, each of my four individuals showed the same SNP, and if I hover over any of these values, I can see more information about that SNP. Now from here, you may choose to filter your data further. I'm going to open the filtering dialog, and you can see that up here at the top of the window, there's a choice asking you to choose between doing a SNP level or a gene level analysis. Now selecting SNPs will simply search for SNPs, meeting the criteria you specify, but selecting genes will search for genes containing SNPs meeting your criteria and then quantify those genes based on the significance of the SNPs within the gene. So SNPs that are more disruptive to the gene will receive a higher value or score than SNPs that are less disruptive to the gene. For example, I'm going to search for genes with SNPs that occur in at least 50% of my four experiments and then I'll click on the Choose SNP Criteria button to specify that I'm looking for non-synonymous homozygous SNPs. Then I'll click search. And you can see that it found 2,327 genes. So I'm going to click on this button here, which will select those genes and show them to me in the gene table. And here I can see the 2,300 genes that met my search criteria. And these columns here show the disruption values that were generated for each sample based on the SNP makeup. If you hover over any of these values, you can see details for that gene, such as this one. 
which shows me that there were 11 SNPs occurring in this gene for this individual, and eight of them were non-synonymous. Now from this point, you can go several different directions for further analysis. For example, I can look at the gene score values in the scatter plot, which allows me to compare genes between individuals or groups of individuals and see them grouped by their level of disruption. For example, I can see that the group shown here in the upper right corner of the scatter plot contains the most disrupted genes occurring in both individuals that I have plotted. These genes in the upper left are the most disrupted in European number two, which is plotted on the y-axis, and these in the bottom right are the most disrupted in European number one, which is plotted on the x-axis. If you have further questions about multi-sample SNP analysis or any of the features we touched on in this video, please visit our website at dnastar.com or contact us at support at dnastar.com.